Hello friends, this is Seher from Easy Peasy and the topic that we are going to discuss today is called as disaccharide. If we look at the word disaccharide, it consists of two different words. The word di means two. Just like the word mono means one, di is two, tri is three, so on and so forth. And the word saccharide means sugar. So that means is if we have two mono sugar units and they react with each other, then they can make a bond between each other. So when two sugar units join together, they will become a disaccharide. Now in this picture, we have alpha D glucose here and it's anomeric carbon, that is carbon number one, is reacting with alcohol that is present on carbon number four of another alpha D glucose unit. And then they are making a bond with each other. So this specific disaccharide is alpha maltose. The bond that they are making with each other is called as glycosidic linkage. And in the specific maltose unit, it is called as alpha 1,4 glycosidic unit. Now, why we use the word alpha here? This alpha that is present on this unit is determined by this OH that is present on carbon number one. So the orientation of OH present on carbon number one determines that this is alpha maltose unit. In this reaction, a water molecule is also gonna release. So this reaction will come under the category of dehydration reaction. Now maltose is a naturally occurring disaccharide which comes from the polysaccharide that is starch, specifically the amylose from starch. And the enzyme that is called a slivery amylase is going to degrade this starch amylose into maltose and short polysaccharide chain. Next. The next disaccharide that we are going to talk about is called as sucrose. Sucrose is usually present in the plants, seeds, and fruits. If we look at the structure of sucrose, then we can see that it is made up of two monosaccharides. One is alpha-glucose and one is beta-fructose. The bond that they are going to make with each other will be called as alpha-1-2 beta linkage because alpha-glucose carbon number one is reacting with carbon number two of beta fructose. This sucrose is commercially made from sugar cans and sugar beets. The next disaccharide that we are going to talk about is called as lactose. Lactose is usually present inside the milk. If we look at the structure of lactose, it is made up of one beta galactose and one beta glucose. The bond that these two monosaccharides will made with each other will be called as beta 1,4 glycosidic linkage. Now those people who have lactose intolerance, what happen in their body? In the small intestine, we usually have an enzyme called as lactase. This lactase is gonna degrade this lactose into glucose and galactose. But in the patients of lactose intolerance, they don't have this enzyme or the enzyme is in low concentration. So lactose cannot get degraded into its monosaccharide units and will be available to bacteria that are present in our large intestine. Bacteria will start fermentation with it and produces gases and acids as a byproduct. As a result, the people will start feeling abdominal pain and inflation. Next, next disaccharide that we are going to talk about is called as lactulose. Lactulose is not a naturally occurring disaccharide. Rather, it is made synthetically in the lab and it has a non-absorbable properties in them. Now, if we look at the structure of this lactulose, we can see that it is made up of one beta-galactose monosaccharide unit 
and one beta fructose unit. The bond that they are going to make with each other will be called as beta 1,4 glycosidic bond. Now, due to that non-absorbable property of lactulose, it is used as a drug as stool softener. It is also used as a drug for liver diseases as it can lower the concentration of ammonia inside the blood. Next, next disaccharide that we are going to talk about is called as a trihalose. Trihalose is a naturally occurring disaccharide unit and it has a property of retaining water. If we look at the structure of trihalose, we can see that it is made up of two alpha glucose unit and the bond that they are going to make with each other is called as alpha 1,1 glycosidic bond. The other name of trihalose is that it is also called as mycose or trimalose. Due to its water retaining properties, it is usually present in animals and plants that need to survive without water for longer period of time. Next disaccharide that we are going to talk about is called as cellobiose. Cellobiose is a naturally occurring disaccharide and it is present in very small quantity in honey or maize. If we look at the structure of cellobiose, we can see that it is made up of two beta glucose unit and the bond that they are going to make with each other will be called as beta 1,4 glycosidic bond. This cellobiose is usually generated by the degradation of cellulose that is a polysaccharide. So cellulose can get degraded itself into cellobiose and cellobiose can get degraded itself into glucose. Cellobiose is used as an indicator carbohydrate for Crohn's disease. Now if we look in this picture, all these individuals are given lactulose and mannitol. This mannitol can be replaced with cellobiose, that's why it is represented here. After some time, they check the concentration of these carbohydrates present in their urine. So individuals without Crohn's disease will have less permeability in their walls of intestine. So they will have less concentration of these two carbohydrates in their urine sample. On the other hand, patients with Crohn's disease will have more permeability in their walls of intestine. So the concentration of these carbohydrates will be present more in their urine sample. By this way, the patients with Crohn's disease are indicated by using the cellobiose. The next disaccharide that we are going to talk about is called as chitobiose. Chitobiose is usually found in chitin, which makes up fungal cell wall, exoskeleton of insects, arthropods, crustaceans, and is also found in fish and cephalopods such as octopus and squids. If we look at the structure of chitobiose, we can see that they are made up of two derivatives of monosaccharide. So instead of glucose, they are made up of glucosamine. The difference between glucose and glucosamine is that instead of OH on carbon number 2, they have an amine group attached to carbon number 2. If we look at the bond that they are making, then the bond that they are making is beta 1,4 glycosidic bond. There are few other less common disaccharides as well and few more that is not represented in this slide. If we can categorize this disaccharide, then disaccharides can be categorized as reducing disaccharides and non-reducing disaccharides. Reducing disaccharides have one monosaccharide in them that have a free hemiacetyl group in them. Now what is hemiacetyl? Hemiacetyl is a group in which it has one OH and one OR attached to the same carbon atom. On the other hand, when we have a non-reducing disaccharide, in non-reducing disaccharide, the acetyl linkage is such that we don't have any free hemiacetyl group available in that compound. Just like in this picture, as you can see, this is a carbon atom 
and it is attached to two OR groups and there is no OH group available in this compound. Now the disaccharides that are present under the category of reducing disaccharides are maltose, lactose, lactulose and cellobios. Now in all these compounds as you can see that in this compound we have one acetyl group and one hemiacetyl group available. So all these compounds have one hemiacetyl group available on carbon number one of each compound. On the other hand, the disaccharides that are present under the category of non-reducing disaccharides are sucrose and trehalose. Now, as you can see in this picture, we have two acetyl groups present in this compound and none of the compound have hemiacetyl group available in this picture. That's it for now. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe the channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.